Hey, hey you. Are you a guy that toots your own horn, but at the end of the day gets laughed at by all the beauties out there? Do you give apples, but never receive any? Does your name start with the letter H? Come on, if you're Jonathan Huberto, you can just say it, man. I'm just telling you. Anyways, boys, I go way off track. Let's get started. Because in today's video, we're going to look at the one thing that's worse than being a useless player. A useless player that gets millions of dollars. Without further ado, here's a list of the most useless player on every NHL team. At number 32, we got Connor Brown. Oh, this beauty makes me laugh my guts out as a Flames fan. But when the Edmonton Oilers signed free agent Connor Brown to a one-year league minimum deal in the offseason, they hoped to reunite him with former Erie Otters teammate Connor McDavid. However, Brown has failed to meet the expectations. Despite playing alongside McDavid, he has also been demoted to the fourth line and scratched from some games. Brown has yet to score a goal and has only tailed four assists. You know what makes this situation worse though? He gets paid $3.25 million next year as a performance boost for just playing 10 games and can I remind you, he's 29. Oh, but next up we got Nick Cousins of the Florida Panthers. Not quite as bad. Nick Cousins is having a forgettable season with the Florida Panthers. He has only managed to score a record of 5 points in 37 games and he sits at a team leading minus 10. While the Panthers are performing well and aiming for another deep playoff run, Cousins seems more focused on delivering dirty hits than contributing positively on the ice. At number 30, we got Matt Grizzlick of the Boston Bruins. Now, Spidey's challenging to find a disappointment from the Boston Bruins at any point in history. But, especially now, considering their strong performance despite key players like Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci retiring. With the top tier goaltending tandem in Swayman and Omar, along with the perennial Rocket Richard Trophy favorite in David Pasternak, Boston Bruins currently lead the Eastern Conference. While Jake DeBrusque was previously a candidate for disappointment, he's been improving recently. Enter Matt Grizzlick, who, like DeBrusque, is also due for a new contract next season, the 30-year-old defenseman started the year slowly with just one point in 20 games, but he has since recorded seven points. However, more concerning is his Corsi, which sits at 48% below 50 for the first time in his career. Now, despite all this, Grizzly just doesn't quite compare to the other entries on this disappointment list. And if you're on it, trust me, you want to get off of it right away, right now. Because up next at number 29 is Philip Gustavin of the Minnesota Wild. Now, Philip Gustavin looked like a standout goaltender for the Minnesota Wild last season after they acquired him from Ottawa Senators in exchange for Cam Talbot, okay? However, after posting impressive numbers in his previous seasons, Gustafson has struggled significantly this year. His save percentage has dropped to 889, and his goals against average has risen to 3.28. Rather than establishing himself as the wild starting goaltender, he has already played almost the same number of games as Mark andre Fleury. While Gustafson did spend some time on the IR, I guess we could give him a break for that. The Wild were surely expecting a much better performance from. Now at number 28, we got Tage Thompson. Okay, I know you guys are already going to get mad at me for this, but okay, let me explain. Last season, Tage Thompson was a standout for the Buffalo Sabres. He tallied an impressive 94 points with 47 goals and 47 assists. Okay, with expectations high for him to continue his stellar performance, many anticipated him to score 60 goals, contend for the Rocket Richard Trophy, and help the Sabres playoff drought. However, Thompson has fallen short of these expectations Currently recording 41 points, that's 21 goals and 20 assists, in 58 games. Okay, and it's fair, right? Like, his team sucks. I don't care that he has a minus 9, but that is also something to note when this guy is supposed to be the next great one for the Buffalo Sabres. And even though he's still a significant contributor, Thompson's performance just ain't up to par. Okay, now we're talking about a guy who put the bar and he set it, all the way down to the basement, okay? He went all the way up and all the way down in a matter of one season. And this one's embarrassing because I'm a Flames fan. Jonathan Huberto's contract. All right, 
with the Calgary Flames is wildly regarded as one of the worst in the NHL history. Acquired in a trade from the Florida Panthers last year in exchange for Matthew Kachuk, Huberto was signed to an average annual value of $10.5 million. While his final season with the Panthers saw him a totally impressive at 115 points, his first season with the Flames was absolutely lackluster. He only managed to get 55 points. That's 115 down to 55. Come on. And the hopes were high for a bounce back season, especially with a major coaching change and a change in GM. But at one point, he was only on pace for 44 points. Way worse than last year. Now he may have recovered a little bit from New Year, but I gotta see more from the guy. If I'm gonna put my hands up for him and cheer him on, I gotta see more from him personally. Okay, now at number 26, we're talking about Tony D'Angelo of the Carolina Hurricanes. When the Canes signed him to a one year, $1.675 million deal, the team's management seemed optimistic about the move. GM Don Waddle praised D'Angelo as an elite offensive defenseman based on his performance in the previous season. However, D'Angelo's tenure with the Hurricane just hasn't quite lived up to expectations. He faced challenges under Flyers head coach John Tortorella, finding himself frequently benched and eventually having his $5 million contract bought out. This season, D'Angelo has struggled defensively and has been a healthy scratch for a significant portion of the games, suiting up for just 21 of them. Despite being touted as an elite offensive defenseman, he has only managed to contribute 10 points in 27 games. Here's a little break for you. I hope I caught you off guard a little bit. If you're enjoying today's video, please leave a like and sub to our channel to help us grow and help defeat the algorithm. Now back to the video. Okay, at number 25, we're talking about Lucas Reichel. You could practically put the whole Blackhawks roster on this list and nobody would be upset by that. Benty has been absolutely insane. As an 18 year old. Anyways, the Blackhawks had modest expectations going into the season, mainly focusing on the development of their young studs like Connor Bedard. His first overall selection. However, 21 year old Lucas Reichel, the former 17th overall pick, has struggled to make an impact. Despite having a decent sophomore season last year, with 15 points in 23 games, Reichel, a left wing, has only managed 11 points in 51 games. Why is he even on the ice? But while his skill and creativity are undeniable, I just don't think he's ready for the NHL. He should be back in the AHL or in Germany. I think a potential demotion back to Rockford could really just stack the cards against him and spark his performance, but the Blackhawks just didn't come to that yet because they suck so bad that it doesn't matter. Next up, we're talking about Ryan Johansson of the Colorado Avalanche. Since the Avs lost Nazem Kadri to your Calgary Flames, they've been searching for a second line center to complement Nathan McKinnon. Ryan Johansson was acquired from the Nashville Predators over the summer with high hopes, but the experiment just hasn't panned out as expected. With the second line combination just not clicking, Johansson has mostly found himself playing third line minutes and only produced 23 points, 13 goals and 10 assists in 63 games. This is Ryan Johansson, a guy I actually used to like. Anyways, next up is Johnny Hockey. Or could I just call him the Columbus Blue Jackets bust? I remember when I was so mad when he left the flames and I thought that we were gonna lose a big piece of our core. And we did. But if he didn't leave, would we really have missed all that much? Johnny signed a seven year deal with an AAV of $9.75 million, which again, honestly sounds like a fair price for a guy that can score over a hundred points a season. And he's done it multiple times. But after joining the Blue Jackets, Gujo has experienced declines across the board. Currently, he's got 50 points in 68 games with 11 goals and 39 assists. Also, minus 19. Up next is the Jamie Benn of the Dallas Stars. Of course, that's Jamie Benn. As the captain and the second highest played player on the Dallas Stars with a salary of $9.5 million, you may expect this guy to do something. But it can be simply said that Jamie Benn has just not performed at an elite level this season. With the arrival of Matt Duon and the continued growth of Wyatt Johnson in the Stars' top six, Benn has just been regulated to the third line. 
This is a significant change from the 22-23 season, where Ben tallied 33 goals and 45 assists for 78 points. Ben right now has 45 points in 69 games with 12 goals and 33 assists. His decline in performance has also affected the Stars' power play, which has dropped from being a top 5 last season to 13th after the All-Star break. At 34 years old, I start to wonder, is father time catching up to Jamie Benn? Or will he continue to be a dynamic force for the Stars past the 24-25 season? Up next is David Perron of the Detroit Red Wings. While the Detroit Red Wings have exceeded expectations this season, David Perron has just not performed as anticipated. The left winger has recorded 10 goals and 13 assists for 23 points in 44 games, putting him on pace for 42 points, which is a 10-point differential from last year. While no one was expecting Perron to be a 60-plus point per player, his current performance is disappointing. In addition, Perron served a six-game suspension for a cross-check to the head of Ottawa Senators defenseman Artem Zuff, which was at the time the longest punishment handed out this season for an on-ice incident. At number 20, we have Trevor Zegras of the Anaheim Ducks. Zegras is a component of the Anaheim Ducks rebuilding plan. He has faced challenges this season after an absolute stellar rookie campaign where he was a Calder finalist. In the previous season, Zegras recorded 65 points with 23 goals and 42 assists. However, this season has just been a little bit tougher on the guy, with only 7 points, 4 goals and 3 assists in 20 games. Zegras has faced setbacks though, including missing training camp due to a contract negotiation issue as he was a restricted free agent and sat out 20 games with a lower body injury. Currently, he is sidelined for 6-8 to eight weeks with a broken ankle, and young centers like Mason McTavish and Leo Carlson stepping up make some questions arise about if Zegras has a long time role in the franchise's vision. Despite his potential, teams may consider trading for him because he is flashy and is only at a $5.8 million cap hit. Up next is Vitek Vanacek of the New Jersey Devils. Many have viewed the New Jersey Devils as Stanley Cup favorites entering the 23-24 season. However, they currently find themselves out of a playoff spot and are even behind the Islanders by 3 points. There's a couple of main issues that contribute to their potential postseason miss. There were injuries to players like Jack Hughes or Nico Heischer or Dougie Hamilton and also having just subpar goaltending performance. Last year, Vanacek boasted a 9-11 save percentage and had a 2.45 goals against average. This season, those numbers have dropped to 8.90 and 3.18 respectively. Vanacek's lackluster performance may have been a prominent factor because he was later traded to the San Jose Sharks. Even worse. Oh. Up next is Matty Beniers of the Seattle Kraken. The reigning Calder Trophy winner Matty Beniers is experiencing the sophomore slump with the Seattle Kraken. Despite the team's surprising success last year, which included making the playoffs for the first time and upsetting the defending champions, Bernier's performance has declined. Last season, he tallied 24 goals and 33 assists for 57 points. But this year, he has only managed 28 points in 62 games. That is 10 goals and 18 assists. While Beniers is not solely responsible for Seattle's regression, his inability to take the expected next step is undoubtedly disappointing. Up next is Tori Krug of the St. Louis Blues. Now Tori Krug finds himself as the most disappointing player on the St. Louis Blues team because this is a team that reportedly sought out to trade him despite having four years left on his contract and invoking his no trade clause for a potential deal with the Flyers, Krug's performance has been subpar. As an offensive defenseman making $6.5 million a year, his minus 25 rating, the worst on the team, is just concerning. Krug's three goals in 61 games played is far below expectations, especially considering his offensive capabilities. Ilya Sorokin is the New York Islanders' disappointment. But before jumping to conclusions, let's assess whether Ilya Sorokin is a bad goalie. Last season, Sorokin boasted a 9.24 save percentage and had a 2.34 goals against average. He also played a significant role in their playoff race. 
He finished second in Vesna voting behind Yoshi Saros and earned an eight year contract extension with an AAV of $8.5 million, solidifying his status among the top net miners league wide. However, this season, Sorokin's performance has dipped. He still has a respectable 909 save percentage and a 3.03 goals against average, which are his worst numbers in the NHL. But it's also crucial to recognize that Sorokin has faced many more shots and scoring chances than most goalies in the league this season, which also contributes to his struggle. He also appears pretty gassed and frustrated. Up next is Matt Dumba when he was with the Arizona Coyotes. Dumba just signed a one-year $3.9 million contract with the Yotes in the offseason, joining a rebuilding team after spending a decade with the Wild. However, his performance in the desert has been inconsistent with periods of solid play overshadowed by defensive lapses. He did have a pretty good hit on Bedard though, I'm just saying. But yeah, Dumba's been a liability on the ice, often or taking unnecessary penalties, reflected by his minus 12 plus or minus. Dumba's production has also declined, having just two goals and three assists this season. His contract is expiring, and he has a relatively low cap hit. Dumba was actually traded to the Lightning for a fifth round pick, and he was also attached to a seventh, which is just sad. Up next is Pierre-Luc Dubois of the Los Angeles Kings. The LA Kings had high hopes for Pierre when they acquired him from the Winnipeg Jets in exchange for Gabriel Velarde, Alex Turcotte, Rasmus Kapari, and a 2024 second round draft pick. However, Dubois has been a major disappointment for the Kings. He had just 20 points and a team leading minus 16 rating. Dude even spent time on the fourth line. His underperformance is frustrating for Kings fans, especially as the teams continue to struggle after a promising start to the new season. Meanwhile, players from the trade, like Gabe Velarde, are thriving with their new team, making Dubois' struggles even more glaring. Up next is Josh Anderson of the Montreal Canadiens. Anderson, the forward for the Canadiens, has had a significant decline in the offensive production this season. In his first 45 games, he had only 7 goals and 6 assists on pace for 24 points, which then would be his lowest since the shortened COVID season. Anderson also experienced a 24 game goalless streak at the start of the season, which was the longest of his career. Despite the frustration, Anderson remains focused on improving and getting back to the level he know he can achieve. Cody Glass is up next on our list for the Nashville Predators. He is having one of the worst seasons of his young NHL career. With just one goal and two assists in his first 23 games, Glass has spent more time on the IR or in the press box than on the ice. He has also failed to live up to expectations after signing a two-year, $5 million deal last summer. Compared to his performance last year, where he dealt only 35 points, Glass has struggled to make an impact this season. Now we know he's getting older, but he's still Alex Ovechkin at the end of the day. I don't know if he's gonna catch Gretzky, but it's gonna be damn close. But yeah, this season, especially at the start, he had a horrible decline in the production. He had just nine goals in his first 44 games and was on pace for the lowest goal total in his career. And his decline raises questions about the impact of age on his performance and his ability to surpass Gretzky's record. Up next is Logan Stanley of the Winnipeg Jets. He's a defenseman in the league that has struggled to secure a spot on the team's lineup, but he was a first round pick. Stanley had played only seven games and failed to register a point. Additionally, he's been a healthy scratch since December 12th, indicating challenges in earning consistent playing time with the Jets. Despite his desire for a trade, Stanley remains with the team. He's likely going to be a deft defenseman for the foreseeable future. For more NHL content, click the video on the screen to watch more. But before you go, leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments who do you think holds the title for the most useless player in the history of every NHL team. And what characteristics or moments do you believe earned them the notorious distinction? Capo Caco was the second overall pick back in 2019. And unfortunately, this season has been marred by injuries. He's only suited up for 47 games in which he scored 14 points. It's just a stark comparison compared to last season where he had 40 points and without missing a single game. It's even possible that he's going to be traded this offseason because his cap hit is $2.1 million and I can bet you some teams want him. Before moving on with the video, leave a like and subscribe to catch our latest content and help our channel. Jonas Corpusalo of the Ottawa Senators. 
I mean, the Sens' goaltending situation has been unstable since parting ways with Craig Anderson at the end of the 2019-20 season. In an attempt to address the issue, the Senators agreed to sign Corpus Allo to a five-year contract with an AAV of $4 million. However, Corpus Allo's performance has fallen short of expectations. In his first 33 games played, Corpus Salo had a disappointing 8.88 save percentage and a high of 3.38 goals against average. This lackluster performance has had many Senators fans angry, giving him the nickname for Paulo. And one of the most concerning statistics is Corpus Allo's ranking is dead last in the entire league in goal saves above expected. He has a troubling minus 13. While Corpus Allo has shown flashes of brilliance on some nights, there's many occasions where he lets in goals that could be described as absolute muffins from a distance, highlighting his inconsistency. Noah Cates of the Philadelphia Flyers is the most disappointing player on the team. While the Flyers have exceeded expectations this season, Noah Cates has struggled to make an impact. The left winger has only had 13 points in 46 games played with 3 goals and 10 assists. And even that is a drop from last year where he had 25 assists and 13 goals in 82 games. Unfortunately, Cates' struggles were compounded by a broken foot, further hindering his ability to contribute onto the ice. Up next is Eric Carlson of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Eric Carlson, number 65 for the Pens, hasn't replicated his Norris Trophy winning performance from the previous season. Although absolutely no one expected him to repeat his exceptional 101 point campaign at this stage in his career, there are concerns about his contribution to the team's power play. Despite being on pace for 60 points, Carlson just hasn't meshed as well with the group as anticipated by GM Kyle Dubas. Pens specifically want Carlson to utilize his skating more and rely less on stretch passes and dumping the puck during the power play opportunity. Up next for the San Jose Sharks is Anthony Duclair. Again, they're a team that you could have pretty much anybody on this list and that would be fine. But his tenure with the San Jose Sharks has not gone as expected since being acquired from the Panthers in a cap dump move. Despite putting up 58 points with the Panthers and making significant contributions during the trip to the Stanley Cup Final, Duclair has struggled with the Sharks. Now on the Lightning, Duclair has 31 points and 59 games played with 18 goals and 13 assists. And earlier in the season, his performance was concerning enough to result in a healthy scratch described by his head coach David Quinn as a reset. On to Andre Vasilevsky of the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning are no longer the dominant force that they once were, and Andre Vasilevsky's performance is a contributing factor. Missing training camp and the start of the season due to surgery hasn't helped his situation either. For the first time in his career, Vasilevsky's save percentage has dipped below 900, sitting at 899. In terms of goals saved above expected, he ranks 25th among goalies who have played at least 20 games, indicating a decline in his ability to steal games for his squad. The pick of the hat for the Toronto Maple Leafs is Ilya Samsonov. Underneath the intense scrutiny faced by goaltenders for the Maple Leafs, Ilya Samsonov has struggled to meet expectations. For instance, his first 13 games, Samsonov posted career-worst numbers with an 862 save percentage and a 3.94 goals against average. He led Toronto to wave him and send him down to the AHL. Although he has returned to the NHL and has shown improvement, he still ranks fourth worst in goals saved above expected. To solidify his position in Toronto's crease, Samsonov will need to perform at a much higher level for the remainder of the season. For Vancouver, we're just talking about Andre Kuzmenko, who is now a Calgary Flame. At the time of recording, he had recorded just 8 goals and 21 points in 43 games for the Canucks. This performance was a significant departure from his previous season, where he had a standout year despite having a very high shooting percentage and a lot of prior success. The Canucks then made the decision to move on from Kuzmenko and recognized him as one of the most disappointing players they've had. This trade provided him with a fresh start, while Vancouver replaced him with Elias Lindholm. Last but not least, or in this case maybe, Brett Howden of the Vegas Golden Knights. Brett Howden, 
a member of the Vegas Golden Knights, has faced challenges in contributing to the team's depth scoring. Despite matching his point total from a previous season in fewer games played, Howden has struggled defensively, sporting a minus 7 rating. Additionally, he holds the worst Corsi on the team at 40% and a concerning on-ice goal differential of minus 5. Hey, if you like this video, feel free to check out some more we have. Like up here, we have the funniest penalty box moments in the NHL. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.